Hello, I'm Colby Parkinson from the Pedestrian and Bicycle Safety Program at the Oregon Department of Transportation. Today, we'll be exploring the challenges that blind and low vision pedestrians in Oregon face when using the transportation system and how they overcome them. October is Pedestrian Safety Month, and every year, October 15th is observed as National White Cane Safety Day. This annual commemoration helps raise awareness of community members who use white canes and guide dogs to assist in their daily living and travel. This podcast was created to help bring awareness to the use and importance of white canes and to help make every day White Cane Safety Day. We'll focus on three individuals, two from Portland and one from Salem, who graciously met with our team and did pre-recorded interviews. We'll start out with our guests' introductions. Mary Lee from Portland will go first. My name is Mary Lee Turner. I was born here in 1947, eight minutes before my sister. I was born three months early, weighed three pounds, born breech. Mother said, God, glad that's over, and the doctor did too, but the nurse said, I don't think it's over. And then my twin sister was born. We were born at Emmanuel, and we were so tiny, we each weighed three pounds. We were put in incubators and uh, given oxygen because they figured that our hearts and our lungs needed more oxygen, so they gave it to us. And that, in, in fact, is what caused our blindness. So my twin sister's totally blind, and I have just a tiny bit of vision in my left eye. In Mary Lee's case, her vision changed throughout her life. The little bit of sight I had in my right eye, I lost when I was about five um, because of uh, a glaucoma situation. And I've had several surgeries to my left eye and I am gradually losing that vision now. Which, it's, which is very common for babies that have this and live as long as I do or have. That, that the retina that is so scantily attached just finally says, that's it, baby, I'm out of here. Nonetheless, Mary Lee has not let her vision challenges stop her from advancing her career. I finally came back to Portland in 2005 as an instructor with the Oregon Commission for the Blind. She is also chair of PSAC, which is the Portland Safety Action Coalition, an organization that seeks to help blind people living in Oregon connect, organize, and advocate for their collective benefit. Next, we'll hear from Darian, another PSAC member. I'm Darian Slayton Fleming. I grew up in Portland. I, was, I lived in Park Rose most of my life. So when I was two years old, I had croup and I, when I was taken to the hospital, I was put in a croup tent. And in those days, we didn't have monitors, so they couldn't see us from the nurse's station. They didn't know CPR, but they did know how to do tracheotomies. The day that this happened, it was shift change, and the nurses all were busy. And when they finally did their rounds, they discovered that I was not breathing. And so they had a quick thinking nurse and other people um, managed to revive me. They took me into surgery and since they didn't know CPR the way we know it now, they manually opened up my chest and massaged my heart and revived me. We don't know how many minutes I was without oxygen. And the estimate is six. I'll always wonder how long it was really. What happened was the opposite of what happened with Mary Lee. Uh She had hypoxia, Uh I had anoxia. Like many blind people, Darian's vision has nuance. I can see colors and objects and people and, um, but I don't have, I can't see facial expression. I tell people I have 3D vision loss. I, I can't discern fine details. I can't see things at a distance, and I can't, I don't have good depth perceptions. Our last interviewee, Stephen Murphy from Salem, lost his vision later in life. Let's hear his story in his words. Best I can tell you is they uh, chalk it up to an idiopathic virus. Uh, it took about two years from start to finish, uh, starting in the summer of 99 and then May 29th of 2001. So I was completely 
blind. I was a mechanic beforehand. Uh, now I'm a massage therapist. Steven's situation is also common, losing sight during adulthood. He shared that experience too. I went to rehab uh, in Austin, uh, Texas for uh, eight months and had a really good uh, a mobility instructor um, and some good instructors there also uh, for technology and, and the such. Uh, getting over the hump of what I was looking at at a computer beforehand and now I'm understanding oh, okay now I understand what I was looking at but the difficulties that are um, everyday normal life cooking cleaning uh, they're pretty easy for me I, I don't stay home I try to get out as much as possible and just try to live a, a normal life as much as it's going to be all three of these people have overcome adversity to continue living their lives as best as they can a goal of White Cane Day is to raise awareness of these stories, which I'll let Mary Lee and Darian explain in greater detail. White Cane Safety Day was named a national day to recognize the efforts and what people who are blind do to be independent. Lyndon B. Johnston signed into law that October 15th every year would be designated as a national day to, to celebrate and bring attention and raise awareness about white canes and guide dogs and how they increase independence for people who are low vision or blind. Our goal is that every person who experiences sight loss in the state of Oregon knows that, that the law is with them and if they do their work in regard to listening carefully, um, getting the training that will enable them to be able to accurately uh, read or hear, interpret the signals around them, um, that operators of motor vehicles, bicycles, scooters, skateboards, all of those things are going to be doing their part to enable us to be safe when we're out doing it. We want people to know that white cane safety, safety for pedestrians, mm -hmm. is not just a, something that we need to recognize on October 15th every year. Safety is an everyday need. It's an everyday issue. They are right. Safety is an everyday issue. Plus, while White Cane Safety Day is observed annually, recognition of challenges for low and no vision community members and pedestrian safety is a year-round effort. There is an important law in Oregon that states a driver approaching a pedestrian who is blind or blind and deaf, who is carrying a white cane or accompanied by a dog guide, and who is crossing or about to cross a roadway, shall stop and remain stopped until the pedestrian has crossed the roadway. Darian shared more about this law. The completely vacates the roadway is so important because a lot of drivers think that they have enough room they can get around us, they can sneak by us, they can sneak behind us, they can sneak in front of us, and they're fast, they can get there and not even touch us. But what if we fall? What if we start walking faster? What if, you know, so please, if you see a person using a white cane or a guide dog crossing the street, whether we are in a crosswalk or not, Please stop and remain stopped until we completely vacate the roadway. And every corner is a crosswalk, even if it's not painted. Every corner is an intersection. So there are penalties for people who do not stop for us and who hit us. Unfortunately, getting hit is a familiar experience for many blind pedestrians. It was uh, raining, it was at 7 p.m. Unfortunately, it was a hit and run. That was a brutal, brutal time. I, uh, luckily, my dog didn't break one bone whatsoever, so I'm lucky I'm alive. I'm lucky I'm not in a wheelchair, brain dead, paralyzed, quadriplegic, whatever. If it wasn't raining, I'm sure just tumbling more and more on dry pav uh, pavement probably would have done much more. I. Uh, Fractured my uh, five, six, seven, 
uh, have a plate in my neck, um, three broken ribs, broken elbow, uh, three fractures in my uh, pelvis, um, destroyed my knee, uh, broke my tibialis uh, plateau, and ripped out my ACL, M uh, MCL, and meniscus. So wear a knee brace just as a more or less of a security blanket when I'm out and about. Uh, that way I, you know, it's easy to stop, step off the curb and, and jar your foot or jar your hip or something. So I wear it as a, as a safety um, caution. People aren't only hit when crossing. Sidewalks carry risks from backing up cars. Sidewalks are public property. Look carefully before you back up. No matter how familiar you are with that driveway, I was on the sidewalk. I was hit. It was not my fault. The trauma was just the same. Look before you back up in a parking lot, on a street, in a driveway. You know, and parking lots are, those are really tricky to figure out how to get through those safely and efficiently and alive. While concern over potential crashes and hazards is common, this doesn't mean they are hopeless as they commute. In fact, white canes and guide dogs can help empower them to travel independently. I used to fall off curbs and downstairs and trip over cracks all the time. And when I was about 22, I had a boyfriend that I met at the School for the Blind and he said, you know, Darian, if you would just use a cane, you wouldn't fall off curbs all the time. Mm. And for some reason, I, decided to listen to him and that's when I started getting better at travel. I started feeling more confident. I had a good friend who um, asked if he could video me as I walked down the street and I said sure. And then he um, showed me the video and it was shocking how I was, um, I was walking with my head down, pretty much shuffling my feet uh, trying to find the curb because uh, I have no depth perception and um, it was it was hell and so then I, I um, got myself a white cane and had a friend show me how to use it and then he videoed me after I was using the cane and that was a, a totally different um, experience to, to see because I was standing up straight. I was walking fast. I was paying attention to my environment, using my hearing, using a little bit of vision, not looking down at the ground and going for it. And so I have been a cane user ever since. So I am a powerful proponent to um, getting training so that people can uh, can go where they want to go and do what they want to do with safety, efficiency, dignity, and fun. White canes are incredibly helpful for blind and low vision pedestrians, but guide dogs are great too. A cane is a cane. I mean, you know, it, it does the trick. <laughs> I did have a dog two years ago. And uh, so that's, this is like driving a piece of junk car and using a dog is uh, like driving a luxury car. I, that's the only best analogy I can give you. Beyond helping blind and low vision people interpret the world, these tools can serve as a form of communication. When we don't use our canes, when we have some vision, sometimes when we're struggling, people don't understand what they're seeing. They don't know why we're struggling. They, don't, they get uncomfortable. So if I use a cane, people understand what they're dealing with. Maybe you don't have a lot of experience with blindness, but at least you understand that I can't see very well. And that gives you a place to start from. So the cane lets other people know that I might not respond to visual cues, like somebody waving me across the street. Well, that does me no good. Just because we're walking with a white cane or a guide dog doesn't mean we're lost. Many of us are very independent and knowledgeable travelers and we know where we're going. It's important for all drivers and pedestrians to know some of the other practices they adopt to travel safely. I try to do the right things that I was taught from my own instructors. Uh, 
when I get ready to cross the street and make sure I, I listen and, and make sure I just don't dart out there. We are taught to use our ears to listen to the traffic. If we hear traffic passing in front of us, we know it's not safe to cross. We wait for the parallel traffic to be moving. And so you might be crossing the street against the light and tell me I can go. And I'm not going to. I'm going to wait till I am sure. Before I cross any intersection, I have to have three minimum of three reasons why it's my turn to go. And that's what I used to teach. So you, you, you can't just casually cross the street. To wrap up the interviews, we asked if there's any advice they had for people with vision. There is one clear request. Please don't like yell at us and honk at us because we don't know what that means and sometimes it startles us. And don't honk at people when they're crossing the street. Uh, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> that. That startles people. However, perhaps the biggest takeaway is to look out for your community. Just know we're out there. We want to be a part of society just like everyone else and uh, just look out for us. I can, that's the best thing I can say. Every day and every night should be white cane safety for everybody. Thank you for listening. I hope, like me, you learn more about the struggles blind and low vision pedestrians overcome every day and the value of white canes and guide dogs. I hope you'll join us in making every day white cane safety day. <laughs>